Barry has many control of these terrible and fine many peculiarities to his world. The spirit of the immortal place situation of this employment. I feel we mark it with Nicholas and Rose. A mere examination of the programs and opportunities open to young people. Seeking with young people on the street, I found that the majority would discourage a big definition. You could formulate their own opinions about what is for me a vicious circle. When you go to look for a job, all the employers are looking for a piece of experience or whatever. And then when you know when no one hires you and the reaction sadly is almost the same wherever you go. Job and and you know, whatever it is I'm looking for. And they say to me, I'm sorry, but we need someone that has more experience. Well I say how am I going to get the experience if you never give me a job? You know, when you look in the car, it's funny, as everything said, experience needed, everything, you know? Or have done a few applications, and things like that. But most of them are already, like, taken. And you replied, like, all the top of your head. Above all, there seems to be a sense of resignation about the competition for jobs. I think I'll find one, but it's going to take a long time. What has caused young people to have such a negative attitude? A number of things, including the media. For one year, is that there were over 65,000 unemployed students in Ontario alone last year. The effect is numbing. When asked if they knew anything about government employment programs, the answer was unanimously no. The Secretary was formed in 1972. At the time, it was a policy secretary supposed to deal with youth issues and youth employment issues. As it became clear that youth employment was, uh, youth unemployment was one of the biggest problems facing youth, uh, the youth secretary has become very involved in youth employment programs, and it now delivers programs. Janet Maxwell, the information officer for the Ontario Youth Secretariat. Most of our responsibilities are the delivery of these programs and as well as information and communications responsibilities and providing information and career guidance assistance to young people, that is, people between the ages of 15 and 24. The government is attempting to provide young people with jobs through programs like Ontario Youth Opportunities. The Ontario Youth Opportunity programs reach a large number of target groups and they attempt to help young people who are interested in career development in different areas and who may have had trouble finding jobs in the areas which interest them. The Youth Secretariat delivers two sets of programs that would interest most young people. One of them being a series of programs that provide support to uh, young entrepreneurs in Ontario. One group of programs being wage subsidy programs provides subsidized uh, limited time jobs to young people to help them in their career development. Subsidies? That means the government will pay your employer to hire you. In the case of Youth Works, Youth Works is a program that gives the two fifty or four dollars an hour per hours for up to twenty six weeks to employers who create jobs for young people. And the people they can apply only have to be between fifteen and twenty four years of age and unemployed for at least three months. One of the strictures of both the job which is created is that it must be in addition to normal hiring and one that would not have existed without program funding. This, of course, is to ensure that the new job doesn't rob anyone of an existing position. Youth Corps. Ontario Youth Corps program is intended to help uh, young people develop basic job skills that will help them in finding future jobs. That's work for the government itself. It's a career development program as much as an employment program. There will be up to 2,044 positions provided in the summer 1985 job book. The job book is the book which lists all of the jobs that are available. And those positions are mostly from Ontario government ministries as well as from community groups. People are encouraged to apply to any program which fits their interests and their skills quite closely. For some of the many agencies you might work with would be the ministries of education, energy, or environment, as well as cultural organizations, the Ontario Women's Directorate, perhaps a hospital, perhaps the National Ski Training Center, or Fort Henry are two places you might work for. 
Uh, there's an enormous number of organizations that are providing jobs under this program. The only criteria for applying to these jobs is that the youth must be aged 15 to 24 and out of work or school for 12 weeks. You can get the job book from youth employment counseling centers in Ontario, from Canada employment centers, from YM and YWCAs, and from community intervention centers. All you have to do is find a job which appeals to you, fill out an application, and send it to the appropriate ministry. Oh, and wait for a reply, of course. But if you are someone who would rather take the first step than wait for an approach, or someone who enjoys taking a risk, there are opportunities for you. Ontario Youth Enterprise is a section of Ontario Youth Opportunities which is designed to provide support and encouragement and financial assistance to um, Ontario's young entrepreneurs, people who want to start their own small business. Especially a small business becomes a more and more important part of the, eco of the economy. Here, the government makes a distinction between students and youth out of school. First, student venture capital. This program provides students with loans, interest-free loans, to support their own summer businesses. And the maximum loan amount is now $2,000. What can be done? What has been done? These students have started businesses that range from worm picking to computer software companies. Every kind of business has been sponsored by this. And it's been an extremely successful program. The loans are provided as early as April of 3rd, with the first business day of April each year. And they're due the first business day of October each year. The loan's interest free for that period. After it's due, interest is charged at small business loan rates charged by the Royal Bank, who at present is the only bank involved in the program. They provide the money. Application forms from student venture capital are available from uh, university and college placement centers or high school guidance centers, as well as participating chambers of commerce or boards of trade. And the chambers of commerce in Ontario are an important part of the program. They provide consultation. Um, and evaluation of businesses. You can also get application forms from Canada Employment Centre for Students and from Rural Bank offices. You're eligible for this program if you're over 15 and will be returning to high school, college, or university for full-time studies in 1985. It was quite natural that the success and the popularity of the Student Venture Capital Program would lead to a program that would provide loans to young people who wanted to start full-time year-round businesses because student venture capital is strictly aimed at summer enterprises. And so this year is the first year of operation of the Youth Venture Capital Program, which also provides interest for loans to young people who want to start their own year-round businesses. The maximum loan amount for youth venture capital is $5,000. Uh, the Ontario government will guarantee the loan for two years, and they pay interest on behalf of the borrower for the first year. The repayment of the outstanding principal must begin in the second year. The Youth Venture Capital is really trying to provide support to young people who want to start um, their careers as entrepreneurs, but who haven't had the years or the ability to develop credit ratings or backing, and who may not have uh, the experience and the contacts that an older person would have. Application forms can be obtained by calling the Ontario Youth Hotline, which will give you information about youth programs across Ontario. The number is toll free and it's 1-800-263-7777. It seems a shame that young people are rarely aware of the opportunities available to them. An obvious place to go for information is a local high school, college or university counseling or placement center. Can employment center for students in? Basically, its, its general function is to serve two, two groups of people. One are students looking for work for the summer. Two are employers looking to hire students for the summer. And really, the job is to put the two together. Erwin Elman the at the Placement Centre at Ryerson Polytechnical Institute. For basically every government program that's available to students for the summer. And we actually do referrals and placements through government programs. Summer jobs, part-time jobs, full-time careers. They take work to find, and the government is just one route you can take to finding the job you want. This summer, the government will provide about 2,000 jobs to young people. 
A less encouraging statistic is the fact that there will be well over 200,000 young people looking for jobs. Some other places you might want to apply to could be summer amusement parks like the Sphere or Canada's Wonderland. You could work in home repair or painting with any one of many student-run businesses like college pro painters. But of course, if you want a job that will lead to a career, there are a number of steps you should take to ensure your chances at the job you want. The very first step, and the one that most people omit, is to do what we call a self-assessment. Now, what a self-assessment consists of is essentially reviewing, taking stock, your work history, which would include not only paid positions, but unpaid ones, such as volunteer experiences, committee work that you may have done. Even, you can even regard the role of student in some ways as a form of unpaid work. But it's one of the Rosemary Volpe, Counselor and Affirmative Action Coordinator at Ryerson Polytechnical Institute. You want to look at your, your educational history. You want to look at your skills and abilities. You also want to look at your interests, particularly those that can be job related. You want to look at your personality, your temperament characteristics. You want to look at your work values, your priorities. And finally, you want to look at the kind of lifestyle that you want to be leading. Most people underestimate what they have to offer to an employer. And having gone through a self-assessment, it will increase one's confidence enormously. Another thing that you can do is to do an inventory of the accomplishments that you've made in your life. They don't have to be huge, award-winning, reward-getting accomplishments. Um, things that you felt particularly good about. Well, the next step after you've completed the self-assessment, and that really is a thorough research of yourself, the next step in the research process is researching industries, researching occupations. Susan Reed, the director of Ryerson's Placement Center, in reference to the hidden job market the jobs that are out there that you may never hear about. Really what you have to do is use your creativity and uh, in your job search, I think, and brainstorm as many avenues as you can. And that means knowing the market. I think one of the most effective ways of tapping the hidden job market is through the use of what we call information interviewing. Now, uh, information interviewing can provide a number of kinds of things. One is uh, career information, occupational information. Because one of the things that you want to do in the context of your job search is to get information about the kinds of positions for which you want to apply. It will help you to reinforce whether indeed this is the kind of, of job you want. And it will also prepare you for the interview where you want to go in and demonstrate to the, the employer that you know what you're talking about. So that questions like, tell me about yourself. Why should I hire you? What are your strengths? You've done your self-assessment, you know what the job consists of, so that you can now match up your background with the requirements of the job. When you conduct information interviews, you are in control. Now, the thing with an information interview is that you want to make clear to whoever you're approaching that you're not looking for a job. You are doing research, and most people are very amenable to being helpful. Most people want to help, and people certainly like to talk about themselves. And even though you are making it explicit that you are not looking for a job, you'll be surprised at how often that kind of process can lead to a job offer. The physical job search itself. That's probably the most discouraging part of the whole process. So how can you approach it in a way that you'll get things done and still keep your spirits up? You really have to get out there. It's not a passive process. It's a job in itself. Make it a 9 to 5 kind of thing. Don't get into the habit of, of being in a rut, getting up at 11 and all of that. Um, set out for yourself for each day some objectives that you can reasonably accomplish in that day. Once you decided that you're going to get out there, what should you do? How should you approach a prospective employer? We know that the best strategy is go directly to employers. If you send out a hundred resumes and you've got to bear in mind the cost associated with doing that, you may get three responses. The less paper that you can put between yourself and an employer, the better. But really what you want to develop is a little speech, if you like. And I would recommend doing that. Hello, my name is what you are looking for specifically and some statement about your skills and your background. It only has to be a few seconds, but it should be tight and concise. And as I said before, really indicate that you know who you are and what you want. Let's face it. Employers are hiring a whole person. They're not hiring somebody with an academic background. They're hiring a total person. You have to convey to the person in charge of hiring 
that you are in control, you know what you want, you know how you're going to get it, and you know that that company is going to be the vehicle for you as an individual and that you have got something to offer the company, that you have got, um, that you are going to be a bonus to that company, that you have to make it so perfectly clear to the employer that you are the candidate, you are it. This summer there will be jobs out there for you, especially if you know where to look. Don't neglect the government-sponsored programs like Ontario Youth Opportunities. And remember the tips, self-assessment, information interviewing, and positive attitude and presentation. Use the facilities available to you, like the Youth Secretariat's pamphlet, The Edge. It's on finding a job or creating your own and making the most of it. Young people who are looking for information on what programs are available and which ones may be applicable to them should call the Youth Hotline which can be reached toll-free across the province at 1-800-263-7777. Remember, there are jobs out there. Just use the facilities available to you. And the results will be that you'll not only find a job, but you will find the job or be offered the jobs that really are going to fit in with your goals and your personality and, and really make a beginning for you. Let's face it, you're it.